We are focusing our attention on the first step in Bible study, namely observation, where we ask and answer the question, what do I see? We are learning to ask some basic questions, six of them. At our last hour, we learned three. Who? What? Where? And today, we want to look at three more. The first of which is when. What time is it? Early in the morning? Late at night? What morning? What night? For example, in Mark chapter 1 and verse 35, we read, The Jesus, rising a great while before day, went out to a solitary place to pray. What day? Why, it was the day after the busiest recorded day in the life of our Lord, of which there are only 52. It was a day packed with teaching and healing and miracles of all kinds and exposure to people, and no one except a person who has a public ministry has any idea of the drain of people upon a person. But so high on his priority list is intercourse with the infinite God that in a day when he might have been tempted to sleep in, he's up a great while before day, fellowshipping with the Father. It's that kind of perceptive insight that you get from asking a simple question. What day? And what we want to do is to make sure that not only do we understand the timing of this event, but what produced it? And what did it produce? What comes before? What comes after? The third question is why? Why did God include this in the Bible? John tells us many other things Jesus did which are not written in this book, the Gospel of John. Then we're forced to ask why did he include these seven signs in that book? And he tells us it's because each of the signs was designed to produce belief, faith in the Son of God. We're studying the great book of Romans and we come to chapter 13 and we understand the relationship of a believer to government. And somebody says, but do you mean I have a responsibility to my government? Paul says, yes, you do. And by the way, he was speaking of the Roman government, which was not the most gracious. I need to know where to find that truth. And why did it come in the greatest theological book of the New Testament, because theology relates to every area of your life, including government. There is a sixth and final question, and that's the question, wherefore, which I love to paraphrase. So what? I now know who, what, where, when, why, but for what reason? How does it relate to my life? And now I begin the most practical aspects of personal Bible study. And I say, so what? In my marriage, in my family, in the place where I work, where most people do not know Christ. So you don't feel sorry for yourself that you're the only Christian in your company because God has sovereignly placed you there to be his representative for Jesus Christ. You ask, how does it work in my neighborhood? How does it work in the financial areas of my life, the social areas? because Christianity is designed to pervade every area of a person's life. I've got to be sure 
that I not only am able to ask the first five questions, because they are going to give me the foundation on which to build in my teaching of this book or this passage, but I also need to ask, how does it apply to me? So that I, in turn, am able to speak to the needs, the problems of other people because I've experienced this truth in my own life. Now again, I want you to become involved. So I want to give you an assignment. I want you to study Mark 4, 35 to 42 by answering these six questions for yourself. Read that passage, reread it several times, and each time find an answer to who, what, where, when, why, and wherefore.